Hello again, my name is Robert Denton and these are my videos. I think this is the 13th or 14th that I've done on high performance. They're actually based on my book, High Performance After Burnout, Fix the Stress Before the Damage is Done, available at um, Amazon.com. That's if you want to really read about uh, the, the real stuff that uh, creates high performance without the stress and believe it or not the easy way and, and I, I never trust uh, when people say oh this is easy buy this buy that it's easy <sighs> well much against my natural beliefs uh, I actually found discovered when I learnt how to manage high performance such as top sports uh, professionals do then I discovered that yes there's effort effort is involved but the, if you do it right do it properly there's no stress it's uh, quite an anomaly quite a paradox which brings me to, oh yes, the other thing. Uh, anybody wanting to buy this book, High Performance After Burnout, who lives in Switzerland, they won't be able to get it from Amazon because of uh, Swiss government restrictions on internet buying. And the Swiss publisher, First House Press, has opened a email address you can contact it's firsthousepress at gmail.com and you'll see the address there with the addresses of some of my previous videos. Right, now, <clears throat> I, I uh, was reminded this morning of uh, child protégés, these children who are extraordinary, exceptional, who at uh, four years old can play a concerto on the on the piano or violin or heaven knows what um, and they are believed to have burnt out when you know they, they get into uh, mature, early maturity uh, or, or if not burnt out they've just sort of become the norm. Now some go on to be quite extraordinary but very few from what I understand. I may be proved wrong, but I believe very few of those child prodigies actually become really high performers in adult life. Now, one of the reasons is this. As a child, their brain is, is just soaking up everything, but also if they are of that disposition they have a talent, an immense talent, and that talent is coming out of their subconscious mind. So they sit down on a play, piano and play like crazy, and they just do it. Now, where the problem begins and where they become normal is that they go to school and they're taught to learn and use their conscious mind. They're taught to reason things out and understand consciously what they're doing and how things work and so on. And then if they try and play the piano or violin or whatever, uh, then they, w without coaching to use their subconscious mind, then they become conscious mind dominant and their gift sort of fades out and they're considered to have burnt out. No, not at all. Not at all. If they were burnt out, they wouldn't be able to go to school, let alone learn anything. They simply have learnt to use the difficulties of reasoning with the conscious mind. Now, I'm not... We all have to learn. We all have to go to school and learn and learn so much and so on. It's when we need to, um, how can I put it, to process that information, to <clears throat> use it 
to some practical good. It could be taking exams. I uh, knew a doctor uh, who I got to know while studying um, modern neuroscience and he said when he was uh, doing his studies uh, to become a doctor, in the evening he just found it impossible to, to revise, to study at home. And 10 minutes he would sit down with his books and everything, the key with coffee and anything he could imagine to keep him awake, but 10 minutes and he was fast asleep. And he would wake up at two o'clock in the morning in a chair, stiff and groggy and just, just get undressed and go to bed. Uh, and then try and do some revision early in the morning. But it, he said it never worked. Yet he passed his exams. So I said, how did you pass your exams? He said, I really don't know. He said, I would sit down and, and look at my exam papers and just sort of consciously switch off. And, and after that, it was all intuitive. And he said, I passed and I got a good mark. And he said, I, I. and um, anyway, I believe he's a good doctor because he uses his subconscious mind. And if he's doing that with his patients, then he's learning an awful lot more about his patients than his patients can tell him. Or the patient may be giving him false information because it's what they believe or what they want to believe or whatever. So if he's a good doctor, if, if he is doing listening to his patients, of course, but if he's also listening to his patients intuitively, then he's probably an even better doctor in my view. And given what I said in my previous two videos, that surgeons know they can repair a body, but they can't heal the patient. Only the patient can do that. And they stand, while the patient is still under anaesthetic, uh, they stand beside the patient's bed and say, look, I've done, I, my team and I have done everything we can to put you together again. Now it's your job to do the healing. That, that's, I heard that several times from surgeons when they're giving lectures and that really impressed me because it is so true but that's another story because that is the story of another book I wrote called Will the Real Healer Please Stand Up and it's all about the body's innate healer and how we cause ourselves huge, problem, huge problems by mucking up our body by the things we drink and eat and smoke and also by the things we do to stop our innate healer from doing its job. Anyway, let's get back to high performance because that's the real fun stuff. Uh, high performance uh, seem, uh, I mean, people who, who do high performance via their conscious mind uh, are likely to burn out. That's what I did. Uh, am I pompous calling myself a high performer? Well, while I was managing my group of companies, I used to look at what I was doing every day and I thought, I just don't believe what I pack into my days. And that somewhere has to constitute high performance, but in my own particular way. <clears throat> I'm not trying to impress anybody, I'm just using it as an, uh, an example. Now, Real high performance is, or real high performance, is high performance without stress. And it's not difficult, as I said earlier on. It's about knowing how to do it, how to set it up. And then, uh, the because it's set up in the subconscious mind, and the subconscious mind does exactly what we tell it to do. So there, it is vitally important that that set up uh, is absolutely perfect with no uh, errors uh, and no scope for misunderstanding. Everything must be absolutely precise. Then the conscious mind can do what we want it to do uh, with impeccable quality because it does exactly what we ask it to do. The big problem is the conscious mind. 
The conscious mind always wants to butt in and say, no, I know better than that. I can do that better. Or no, I'm, I, I don't believe that. Or, or I should be doing this because I learned to do that at school or college or by one of my instructors or whatever. And that's the big problem. Take golfers. I use golfers because it's an amazing um, way of describing what happened. When a golfer, a professional golfer, I'm talking a top professional golfer, swings to hit the ball, he's actually, he or she, is actually doing it subconsciously because they know that the moment their conscious mind starts saying, oh, but I was taught this by my this coach or that coach, or I must do this, I must do that, blah, blah, blah. And it's all wrong. And they know they have to keep their conscious mind out of the game. And they play the game with the conscious mind. And those who are better at doing that become the top golfers, the big winners. So there we are. We can do it in golf, we can do it in any aspect of our life or profession. It's our choice. This is Robert Denton, signing off.